The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour on this 24th of May before the long weekend. And I hope everyone has a great long weekend. Uh, let's look at the market. This is the 8 a.m. edition. I'll be doing this, uh, I'm doing this early. It'll be uh, recorded and played in my noontime show. So, pre market. The futures, the Dow futures up 114. Yesterday, the Dow, you can see in this chart right here on the left, the Dow closed in this arch formation. Remember in the Chapman wave, what we're always looking for is, let me just do it from the beginning, we look for the most identifiable lowest low, merely count each successively higher peak, four peaks later, peak A, B, C, D, alphabetically, uppercase on the way up, can go to E, F, and G, but at D, the fourth highest peak, other things can happen. That's where the yellow light goes on. You don't have to do anything. You just got to be wary that this is where you could get a sharper decline or an instant restart where it goes to another four peaks higher. Patterns I look for straight line like up and down. That's one. An arch or a cup. That's two. And then you get the mix where they come together. H pattern means that if the left side low gets taken out, uh, it, with certain technical deterioration, that's very negative. And on the upside, if you get if the left side high gets taken out in the cup formation, and it closes above that with technical confirmation, that's very good. All right, enough with that. Let's get to the nitty gritties. What does it mean? Well, it means that you've got the V shape or cup shape in the in the weekly chart of the Dow from the 26,951 slumping to the 21,712 December low, October to December. Rally sharply takes a longer time than starts to roll over after that Chapman Wave 2 bar reversal at on the 26th of April at 26,695. The next high is just four points lower. Starts a peak C, and this peak C has gone underneath. I made it thick this week to show it because it's so defining. The 14 period exponential moving average, that black line, thick black line, under it right now, it's being repelled from the daily. 14 period moving average in the H formation, lowercase h, remember? And that makes the 25,222 low of the 14th, the left side low of critical importance. Why? Because the magnet is trying to turn up, but it might make a W formation if there's a failure today. One of the reasons why for my subscribers to my opening call, remember, this is the weekend, the last weekend we can get a fantastic discount, 20%, 40%. I mean, this is really uh, quite uh, quite something. Uh, Tiger, it's called the Memorial Day Tiger Dollar Sale. Let me just get it right. It's 20% bonus, 30% bonus, and a 40% bonus. I mean, in the market, you don't get bonuses like that. So that's very important. Uh, so for my subscribers, we've been short since uh, the 22nd of April, just before the, the recovery high, 26,695. So we've taken some profits on the way down, still short. And uh, we're looking to see what happens on this oversold condition if there's a bounce could make an m formation lowercase h goes to a lowercase m if there's just a weak bounce it's testing the 25,200s. that's quite important here how this oversold rally uh, works is going to be important in the ym this is pre-market dows up 111 was up much more than that uh, but right now it shows you that this uh, MACD is trying to make a W formation. Stochastic actually rallied. It's a 37%. It's not great, but it's at 37%. Very important uh, whether they 25,708 in the futures. Let me just go back to the uh, cash because most people are looking at the cash. 25,744 is the dash pink, uh, is the pink line right there. The nine period exponential moving average resistance. Break that, and 25,820 is the 14 period moving average that's been in resistance for so long. Uh, yes, Ruby, we'll look at cocoa, we'll look at the um, commodities in, in a moment. Let me just finish this. So, the, the Dow uh, had a sharp pullback gap down yesterday. It's usually not a good sign. So, this rally is going to be really important. It's options expiration. They can do anything they want <laughs> on options expiration day. SP, right now, the SP futures are up. Uh, they are up, let me just check, 12, and uh, 
Here's the S&P cash. There's the arch formation, the lowercase h pattern. Look at the weekly chart. MACD hasn't crossed negative yet. So in the uh, ESM19, the June contract, you'll see a bounce. The bounce is 20, at this 2832 level. You need to see, and this is at 811 in the morning, Eastern time. So 1211, we'll see where it is four hours time. 28.50 is the uh, first nine period exponential moving average resistance in the daily, and uh, 14 periods up at 28.59. 120 minute chart has made a peak B. Um, it needs to hold the 28.28 to 28.22 area. If there's any weak, further weakness from the, the earlier gap up, um, we'll see what happens. Certainly breaking above short term, above 28.40 would be uh, a good action. Let's go to the QQQ, the QQQ trading up 0.53 right now at 178.78. Really a terrible day yesterday, made a lower low leg E um, underneath the 14 period moving average in the weekly chart. The Qs, the NDX 100, that has to go to the 189.50 to the 180.20 area. And it has to do it by Tuesday, today to, or Tuesday. That's really important because if it's, if it fails, yeah, that's really not a good sign. And I have to tell you something, looking at some of those uh, tech stocks, they are really overbought, look fabulous on weekly charts and monthly, but on a shorter term basis, they're somewhat overbought. I'd like to go just for a moment to the IWM, which is the Russell 2000, up 0.31 and 149.70. It had a sharp decline, it's broken support in the weekly chart, doesn't look very good. I'd said about a week or so ago, I'd said the 153s is really the area that it needs to hold. It just smashed right through that. Not a good sign. So we'll see what happens with the uh, Russell 2000, the small caps. Let's go to gold because gold was down earlier. Now it's down three. It was down four uh, before. It's at 1282. It had a really strong candle yesterday. Stuck. Look at this. I drew this in. I especially made it thick uh, for a reason. Look at that black line. That is the 14 period exponential moving average. It goes above it and then gets repelled right at that line. This is going to be important. Why? Because evidently, um, um, Theresa May said that she's either going to resign or she's about to resign. And look what happened to the British pound. Tried to rally and it fell. But look at the dollar. This is very interesting because the dollar is holding very nicely right on the 14 period moving average at 97.79 on the continuous contract, got repelled to the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Hasn't uh, 98.33 was the previous high. 98.37, it's gone to a new high. So this actually is now E slash B. And the daily chart went to an E in the weekly. And a modest high at a peak E in a weekly chart says, this is where you've got to think that maybe the brakes are going to be put on. And there's a little bit of a uh, hiatus as uh, there's a breather after such a fantastic move. So I'm watching the dollar closely, but so far it's acted extremely well. Could it have a breather? Yep, sure can. It could go down to 97.20, 96.80, and still be in a consolidation. But so far it's done extremely well. Uh, the EUR, USD, the euro is acting, uh, I tried to rally, it's at 1.118. Uh, it's not doing very much. But look at wheat. Uh, wheat uh, is trading up six at 476 and a quarter. It really is holding the nine period, the green line, nine period exponential moving average beautifully. And corn is doing the same thing. Corn is actually even better. It's at 394 and three quarters up five. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, pre recorded. This is the eight four. The TAS Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website, you can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back. Uh, Basil Chapman, Tiger News and Zawa. Uh, this is a pre-recorded show. It will be replayed at noon uh, for my usual time. Uh, so this is uh, the Coco. And I was asked about Ruby, wanted to know about Coco. So I, I drawn this in a little while back, uh, maybe last week. I said there's a there's a down channel. I love these down channels because when it breaks out to the upside, there's a chance that you can get in the Chapman Wave methodology a one to one on the upside if uh, the tacticals confirm the rally. And so far, they really are. And if you look at this, I usually do it very conservatively. I take it from the low bar. Oops, I just made it from there. From the low bar to the high bar of the uh, channel itself, if I'm able to. And then I take another one. I, I copy it, and then I paste it, and I go from the, the most important low bar not the breakout, that's for the next level. So the first one says that my target would be two, is it 2,435 right now, Coco, up nine. And my target here is 2,453. That's at peak B. And I'm looking for a, a, a leg C to begin at 2,454. So that's the way I'm looking at it. Most importantly, is that the MACD cross positive and the stochastics at 89%, that's very strong. As long as the stochastic remains flat in the, in the 80s to 90% area, that's really good action. I'm expecting that the next time I look at it, I'm going to take it and I'm going to make this trend line to the upside, I'm going to take it from the breakout and that would take you to 2505. So Ruby, my target is uh, 2454 first, and then 2506. So uh, that's the way I'm looking at it. The weekly chart is starting to improve a lot. It'll go to leg C in the weekly chart about 2460. And the monthly chart is not looking that great. It's really just building. I drew this A in, and I drew this cup formation with a W cup formation on the right side. We'll have to see how that works. Usually there's a trend line that you can follow and the trend line in this particular case is very clear right here. Oh, it cuts exactly. And it says the resistance is right at that 2462-ish area, uh, 2470. So I hope that helps.
Uh, let's go on, and we're going to look at um, where was it? Oh, TLT. This is I. I think yesterday, out of all the stuff I did, I got a feeling I forgot to do the TLT. It was so important. I wanted to do it to say that it broke to 128. At the point, it wasn't 128.09, but it did go to 128.09. back again all right there it is should be back again uh do you hear me say yes if it is a yes i've been talking away uh yeah we're back okay yeah it's just uh, for some reason there was a poor connection I'm not sure why we've got no storms today all right so what i was saying is the tlt very important the iShares 20-year treasury bond etf um hit 128.09 yesterday it broke out remember we're talking cup formations and arch formations look at this beautiful cup formation cup and handle with a breakout usually with a cup and handle it comes back to retest the handle which is at 126.69 that's the lip on the left side most importantly i i believe that this is really representative of money coming out of the insecurity of the volatile equities and going to the so-called security of the um in the so-called security of the of the uh, bonds. I'm just going to do this for one second. There we go. Click. Click. There it is. See this cup formation? Left side, right side, price, time match. It broke it out one day later yesterday. Uh, and so far, what is looking like? Uh, still no charts. Please let me know. Uh, charts. I'm going to put a question mark. Charts, this is terrible that this should happen right here, Friday before a long weekend. I want you to show these things. They're very important right now. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on here with my, is it my, my internet? Maybe it is. So look at this very large cup formation or bowl formation in the weekly chart of the TLT. The, the left side high of importance is this peak C right here. Uh, that's at 120. 957 back in September, the week of September the 8th of 2017. Uh, no, I'm, I'm only going to go back to December of 2017, 12859, and we're in the 128s. Uh, no chart at all. Now, what do I do? So let me try this again. Go click, uh, go out of that, put this up, and go click again. Says camera is on and gremlins we've got all over the show. And now, question mark, chart sound. Okay, we're, we're back. So in the weekly chart, you can see this huge cup formation. It's really like a ball formation because it's so big in the weekly. And look at the cup formation in the daily. It's actually gotten there even quicker than I anticipated. So this is very in terms of bonds, it's saying yields are coming down. So right now, there's a chance we might see the yields come down, uh, the TLT pull back a little bit, and then start to move up maybe next week. This is a very important moment. Just give you parameters. If the yield, if the TLT trading at 127.67 right now uh, start to deteriorate, if it starts to pull back, all of next week, right? Short week next week, but all of next week, if it breaks under 126, you will see probably see a bounce in the stock market and um, yields will pop up a little bit. But as it stands right now, it's really important that if you're looking at all these different indexes, their daily charts are suggesting, yeah, you could get a bounce, but be careful. This is options expiration today. Let me just put, put this out what I said to my subscribers. The Dow needs to be over 100 points at 10 minutes past two to have not succumbed to any sudden options-related selling. I think all the selling was yesterday. What we might see today is that every dip is being bought because of options-related activity. 
That's just what happens very often. You get counter trend moves from the previous session. So just keep that in mind. Most importantly, look at crude oil. So crude oil yesterday took a real dive. Today it's bouncing a little bit. It's up 0.65 at 58.55. What I'd said for quite quite a maybe for about six or seven days that the pattern that we were looking at just a very modest rally from the up channel. Look at this long term up channel. Long term meaning all the way from December. It held the red line and then it held the 200 period moving average, this orange line, crude oil, continuous contract. Tries to rally, pathetic, just kind of walks above the 14 period moving average, the black line, and then plop, smashes under it. Now you've got 59.5 to 60.50 as really strong resistance. This is going to be interesting because I've said that. Crude oil and the general market trend for a while seem to have gone together. And if crude oil falls, we've got to watch the Dow. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Ignition's Hour. Future. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, right, we're back. So crude oil, as I said, uh, the chart is very negative. The weekly chart is now quite negative in terms of price. It's way under the 14 period moving average. But the MACD hasn't turned down, but the stochastic is only at 65%. So we've got to watch this real closely. I think crude oil... I'd say 57 to 55 if it breaks the 58 level. That's really very important. And I suspect that's kind of where it should try to bottom. And maybe that's, that would be the timing. Maybe even next week we start to see the general market. Uh, there's just such there's so much going on geopolitically, economically, news reports. I don't know what happened with the uh, 8.30 report this morning. Uh, but so far the futures are, let me just go to the futures here. 
you're looking at the um, E-mini is up 13, sort of shaky, up and down, up and down. Oh, it's, it's all handling it quite well. Make it real clear, uh, the futures, uh, 20, 28.42 starts to trade in that area. The high today is 28.39.50 so far pre-market, and it's up 14. So if we can get to the 28.42 area, that'll be a good sign to say the bounce could actually go into Tuesday. I actually don't. I would have preferred today to be very weak, and then we, we get a really good low Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. This is kind of usurping the energy to the downside by wasting it by a little a pop up. That's what I'm thinking here. So let's watch this closely. Uh, so the E mini underneath 28.30 to 28.28. That's really important near term support underneath 28.24. It's a real problem today. So uh, we're at 28.33 at this particular moment. So going negative at any stage. Even if it's just based on options-related activity, that, that'll be just very disillusioning to the bulls. That's actually kind of what I'd love to see, because then I think Monday, or or Tuesday, or Wednesday, we start to see some kind of attempt at really holding well. Okay, so uh, a couple of things I was looking at. Look at this. Uh, K, K is Kellogg's holding pretty well. Coca-Cola, would you believe Coca-Cola um, getting back to almost the all-time high of 50.84? Uh, nice move at 49.89 pre-market leg. I'm calling this actually a leg C. Uh, yeah, new leg C to the upside and D in the weekly chart. So there is strength. Um, I'm kind of impressed with that. If you look at the XLP, which is the, here we go, this is the S&P Select Consumer Staples, holding pretty well. Leg C in the weekly chart, probably a peak C today if it doesn't pop over 58.40. Uh, it's at 57.73 right, right now. There are some things that are working quite nicely. Now uh, look at uh, what I was looking at. So, oh, if you look at the SMHs, the semiconductors, so we short the Dow, we still short the SMHs. They should have a rally. They're at 100.04, hit 98.50 yesterday after the 120.71 all-time high on the 24th of April. This is not good action, so it should, I mean, Stochastics is flat at 9%. You want to see it make a V-shaped pattern at 9%, not flatten out. On balance, volume says, hey, get ready for a bit of a bounce. 104.58, sorry, 103.27 is the 200-period daily uh, um, resistance. And then 104.58 is the pink nine-period exponential moving average. 106.53 would be next. I think there could be a bounce based on this terrible weekly chart, just four, one, four weeks down, severely down after that all-time high. That peak C really looks like a peak D, MACD cross negative. Very important session here. Let's see if there's any strength at all in the semiconductors. IYR question in the den, that's the REITs. IYR holding very nicely. This is very much like the XLU, they all in the same category. This is the iShares Dow Jones US REITs Index Trust trading at 87.84. Uh, let's see, above 88.50. That's really excellent action, all time high. So. Uh, I, that would be very good action. So um, here's the XLU, which is the S&P Select Utility Spider Fund. Huge move up, leg D in the week and monthly, leg G slash C in the weekly and still looking strong. Very strong leg B in the daily. XLU is looking very good. Hmm, we should have thought of options on this. <laughs> A little late now. All right, so we're looking at the area of Yields coming down is helping, but has it helped the HY, HEX? HEX is the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index. Nope. Um, it had helped it going from 227 up to that high that was made in the 316 area. That's a pretty big move. Considering it came down from 369, got cut by a third when it went to 277 in December. Very nice bounce. I'm treating this as a bounce. I... That real estate market has had a terrible time with rates so low. You've got to wonder what is going on. I think it's prices, number one. I think it's a kind of an uncertainty. And I also got a feeling it's because the people who have put money, invested money, and are thinking that they'd like to put it into real estate are, are, have been helped for quite some time in the stock market. And they're wondering, do I take it out of the market, which is working well, and put it into the real estate and buy a house? and then have used up that capital. That's just my thinking. How do we know? It's really difficult to tell. These are 
personal uh, issues and you can't deal with it um, just on charts in this particular instance because you have to know the thinking behind it. But the arch formation that's been formed says that 298 better be good support because underneath it, that's a real problem. So, okay, I've got a bunch of things that I've already done. I want to do also, I had a question, okay, a question on the S&P. Uh, a questioner has the SH, which is one-to-one -one short the S&P. Done very nicely here. So the S&P is making this arch formation. The question is, where would you put stops? Let me get the exact question right here. Um, Basil, I'm along the SH at a profit. Where would you suggest the stuff from where we are now at the rest of the days? Tim, Tim, yep, back to you. So I'm looking at this. And my big question here is, is this going to be a full a full H pattern, lowercase h, let me just show it again, lowercase h, is this going to be that H pattern that breaks the left side low? That's a Chapman Wave core fundamental technical uh, pattern that we look at. Or uh, is this going to be a bounce in the S&P that's sharp enough to say, Take your profit. So, Tim, this is what I'm going to suggest. Because the S&P has come down from 29.49 to the low of 28.01, I think it is, 28.01, that's a pretty deep, that's the deepest correction it's had since the, the December low. It is getting ready for a bounce. I'm going to suggest to you, if you have enough, take it a little bit off right here. Just if, if the question is, I'm getting a little nervous, I've got a profit, I don't want to give the profit up, then I'm going to say, take some off, keep the core position. On the SH, I'll tell you where I'd be a little cautious, SH. That is the S&P, it's a pro shares, trust short S&P 500. I'm not sure today is going to be the day, unless there's a really disappointing sell-off. If that's the case, remember what I said yesterday for the, the S, question on the SNH, SH. Is that 2802? If we can go to 2803, you have to take something off in terms of money management. If you're thinking money man management, if you're thinking of squeezing the last penny out of this decline, then you can just raise the stop to 2785, something like that. Fairly tight, but not so tight. And just let that be your stop. But then you have to suffer through the weekend because you can't but probably get out of the SNA SH until Tuesday morning. I think we need to talk about this. Actually, I've had a couple of questions about this. We'll be back in a moment. The S&P futures are now only up 12, and uh, the Dow futures up 110. I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently 
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So let's just do this. Remember, we're looking at chart formations. So I did this in the 120-minute chart. Look, there it is. There's this. There's the pattern right here. This is the. I made. I didn't make it green. I made it blue just to let it stand out. This is what happens at the top. So uh, Tim, what I'm looking at is 28.02 was the high. Yes, the 120-minute chart. So I've seen the daily, but you can see it better in the 120-minute chart because the MACD isn't anywhere as strong as it was at 28.02, but it is rallying quite strongly. The stochastics at 81%. I love over 80%, but it it's it made a little turnaround. So this could start to deteriorate. And that would say that the technicals on the right side are not quite as strong in the 120-minute chart as they were earlier on on the 13th when it made the high. So what I'm going to say to you is, if you have any questions, either way, why don't you take a little bit off right now to reward yourself if you haven't taken off already, and then put a trading stop on another portion, and that trading stop would be at about 27.69. Yeah, 27.69, that's only about seven points low. You're pretty much going to get stopped out if there's a pop-up this morning. Um, the way I'm looking at this, I think that you, you're going to get a better price in your SH at some point. But you might want to have a second. Oh, I know exactly what you want to do. Maybe take something off right there at the open and, open and put that aside. And let's watch it together on Tuesday, because if there is a rally that's very sharp into the close, you could see it go down to 27.44, 27.52, 27 27.44. But if it does a rally and then fails, then maybe Tuesday you can get back into that position about where you are or maybe a little lower. But at least you've taken some profits. That's really important with an option that's the inverse. If it was two or three times, I would say you have to take something off right now because these things move so quickly. But one to one, I feel comfortable. We're one to one short the Dow still, the part that we have left. I, I, I didn't see any reason why we should take anything off now. Even if there's a big pop up, we're still in at a very comfortable position. I don't know where your your position is. So I'm just saying yes. I think that based on the weekly chart, based on the daily chart. I think the SH has a little more to go to the upside. The S&P has a little more to go to the downside. But very short term, treat it as a trade. The core position, I, I would recommend try to hold as, try to hold it. But the trading position, you can work that, go in and out. But uh, I wouldn't get too carried away. Try to keep the core position and see how that holds. OK. So what we're looking at now in terms of uh, the different sectors, we looked at the IYR. What about the IYT? Questions have come in about this. So the IYT at 183.50, you have 30 cents right now. That weekly chart almost looks like the IWM, not as bad, but it doesn't look very good. And it says to me that there is a problem in the transportation sector. Doesn't matter which sector. Let's see if the XAL, XAL is trading. Yeah, not very good. 
So, and with crude oil down like this, you'd expect the XA, XAL, the airline index, ARC index, it's down 26 cents pre-market at 97.69. You would expect it to be up a dollar something with that big smash to the downside. So this is telling us something about the economy. I think the economy is seeing some slowdown right here. We've got to be careful about that. We've seen enough evidence, but there are sectors that have been pretty good. So it's a real mixed market. So that's the answer to that question. Another question I had was the VIX index. You know, yesterday the VIX index wasn't very high. It went to 18, I think 1802 or something, 1805, and now it's trading at 16.15, down 77 from yesterday's close. That VIX index in the 16s is saying that there are people that are buying insurance, volatility insurance. But if it starts to slide and it goes under right here, underneath the low of yesterday, under 1528, in other words, if it goes to 15 or even 14.90 day because it's such a big rally, then I have to consider that that VIX index, that long wick that we saw three weeks ago, um, is going to be there for a little while longer. But if the VIX index by the end of the day actually trades into the 16.50 area, what is going on? Uh, no sound. Damn. Don't know what to do. Um, then, what we're looking at, let me just close this out, see if I can do something about that. Uh, holiday mode. All right. So, getting rid of a bunch of stuff. Let's see if that works. Um, sound back. Sound. Well, I'm not sure if it's altogether sound is a problem. But in the meantime, what I'm looking at is the VIX index. If it starts to trade in the 15s, that's going to be more positive for the market. If for any reason it starts to trade up in the 16.40 area, that's just not very good at all. Um, and I'm not sure if we get anything here. Let me just test it out in the uh, sound area. Sound, 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 nothing there. Oh, this is a real frustrating thing. Not sure why it's happening. All right, can can see your chart. All right, chart, we're back. All right, this has just been so frustrating. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I got a feeling I'm looking at my modem. Um, everything seems to be flashing okay. All right, let's just do this because you never know when the sounds in, sounds out. I was saying the VIX index trading at 16.15 right now. If by the end of the day it starts to trade in the 1582 area or lower, it suggests that there's going to be market strength going into the close. But if there is a very big disappointment in the market and the VIX suddenly trades in the 1632 to 1638 area, that's saying selling pressure is may being maintained. And that's the reason why I'm saying to Tim that, yeah, as a just a money management, if you're in a position and you've got enough, take a little bit off because you want to reward yourself for the gain. But I am thinking that um, from the basis I'm looking at right now, the Dow, the S&P, uh, the QQQ, NDX 100, there's a little more work to be done. Probably by next week, we start to see something that represents a real tradable low. I'm not sure yet whether that's the case. That's my thinking. So we'll see if that's going to happen. Now, I had a question about um, GE. Yeah, I'll do GE just for a second. GE, to me, is, is trying to form some kind of a tradable base. That's a tradable base for an intermediate-term rally. I don't think it's there yet. It didn't make an island reversal yesterday, but it is saying there's, it's held very well from the low of 6.66, and it's hit, uh, it's gone to the 11s, and now it's trading at 9.67. I think there's a little more work to be done. I want to see how it handles 9.20 to 8.90 if there is another sell-off at any point in GE. If it can hold that for the next two weeks, I think maybe GE is starting to look a little bit more promising. So I hope I answered your question there. Uh, next question I had was, could I look at uh, Amazon? Amazon is trading right now. Amazon's up 17, had a big down day yesterday, 50-something points. It's at 1,833. Um, it's gone to a leg C. There's this H pattern. You remember what happens on the left side after an H pattern? Well, the idea in the Chapman Wave methodology is, here's the left side, there's that H pattern, right? The left side, low of 18, 1575. Let me type that in, then we've got a break, then we've got the final section. 
18.17, I think it was, 25 or something like that. Um, going lower says that you've got to close above it. Well, it didn't. It closed below it, and that's got some other um, issues. I'll be right back. Hopefully, Basil Chapman Titan Ignition's our pre recorded show. This is five minutes to nine, ten minutes to nine. It'll be ten minutes to twelve. I'm and certain replay. you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. Uh, just to mention that on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday the 29th of May at 7 o'clock, I'll be the special speaker at the Boston Investors Group uh, meetup. Um, and that's going to be at MIT E51, room 376. Uh, 70 Memorial Drive, Cambridge, Mass. Anyone in the area, I'd love to meet you. This is a great group. I get, always get questions that I really have to ponder because a lot of, a lot of people there are fundamental analysts and, and there are many technical analysts as well, but it's really exciting. I'll be discussing socioeconomic, political trends affecting the market, charts, key indices, Chapman Wave methodology and notation on the different charts and really important areas that, that we've covered now this morning. And of course, dollar gold, etc. So uh, I hope to see you there. And let me get out of that just in case that's also messing up the uh, uh, save changes. Yes, you're out of there. So uh, on the shorter term, you've got to see the Dow, which the futures are up about 111 points, 120 points. You, Dow futures, you want to see a good rally. And at three o'clock, uh, 10 minutes past two today, if the Dow is up over 100 points or more, that's going to say the options expiration hasn't affected it negatively and that there could still be a rally into the close. But just be careful for those rug pulls because in options expiration day, they do all sorts of things. Rally's, rally's beautiful, and then all of a sudden, boom, slide. 
slides and then all of a sudden boom rally so just be aware of that and i still we're still bearish uh, for my subscribers to my opening call my daily newsletter please uh, check out the um, check out the uh, front page of the memorial day weekend um, this is a great time to save money. Look at all the benefits you get from the Tiger Dollars. See the front page of TFNN. The opening call is my daily service. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I, I still believe that we're going to be testing the lows of 25,200s in the Dow over the coming week or so. We're getting close to some kind of a really good, uh, good uh, balance. Stay tuned for Larry Pizzavento. And if you're listening at noon, stay tuned for Steve Rhodes. And uh, thank you, Larry. Happy holidays to you. And happy holidays to everyone. What I am looking at is the Dow resistance today will be in the cash index is 25,540 to 25,590. Uh, and then 25,620 is next if there's a really strong rally. You don't want to see a big rally have a rug pull and all of a sudden go close to negative or only plus 20 by the end of the day. That'll be very poor action. Have a wonderful weekend. Check out my opening call on the front page of TFNN. See you on Tuesday.